In 1999, archaeologists in Argentina came across an impressive and shocking finding. At an altitude of 6,739 meters, high on the peaks of the Andes, there lay buried three children, four, six, and 15 years old. They died around 1500, at the high point of the Inca Empire, then the largest empire in the Americas and one of the largest in the world. Due to the extreme altitude and the cold and dry climate, the children's bodies were perfectly preserved even after 500 years, making them some of the best preserved mummies in the world. More than 100 such bizarre burial sites have been found. But what happened to these children and how did they end up there? Today, in A Day in History, we explore the ritual of Kupakocha, a religious sacrifice that claimed the lives of young boys and girls from all around the Inca Empire. A story of pain and death, accompanied by religious fervor and the ruthless need to establish imperial authority over vast territories and populations. The Inca Empire is best known today because of its rapid decline and extinction after the Spanish conquest in the 16th century. It is associated with gold, civil strife, and the amazing Machu Picchu. The history of the Incas, however, started long before the Europeans set their foot on the newly discovered shores of the Americas. The Incas were the last of a series of pristine civilizations in the Andes that developed independently from other civilizations, even those in Mesoamerica. The first Inca king lived in the 13th century and ruled a kingdom around the capital city of Cusco. This small kingdom grew steadily over the next two centuries and in 1438, King Pachacuti founded the Realm of the Four Parts. He and his successors managed within a few decades to unite the Andean region under one rule. As its name indicates, the kingdom had a central government in the capital Cusco and four provincial governments, the Four Parts. Following a long tradition of trade and administrative connections, the Inca state was highly centralized and controlled its territory effectively through laws, military and administrative presence, and a complex, extensive road system covering thousands of kilometers that allowed easy communication between the different territories. This was indeed vital, as the empire was vast, almost 2 million square kilometers covering large areas of what is today Argentina, Chile, Peru, Bolivia, and Ecuador. Religion played a crucial role in Incan culture and was deeply intertwined with the state. The first Incan king, Manco Capac, was considered the son of the sun god, Inti. The Incas sought to integrate newly acquired territories through cultural and religious assimilation, promoting the sun god, Inti, as a superior deity. Alongside Inti, they also revered the creator god, Viracocha, the thunder god, Ilapa, and the moon goddess, Mamakila. As part of this process, which held both religious and civil importance, the Incas built more than a hundred ceremonial sites from 1470 until the Spanish conquest in 1532. These sites were associated with the old Andean traditions of huacas, which were sacred objects or places. While there was a tremendous variety of huacas, even a pillar and a dead fox are mentioned, high mountain peaks were among the most common. Of course, considering the magnificent Andes, one can easily understand why. It was on one of these sites, the Lulailaco Peak at 6,739 meters above sea level, the world's highest archaeological site, that the three children mentioned at the beginning were buried. And we know that they died as part of a ritual sacrifice called Capacocha, the royal crime. Much of the information on the important practice of human sacrifice in the Inca Empire comes from Spanish chroniclers who visited the region right before and after the Spanish conquest in the 16th century. It is through them that we know so much about the Capacocha. It was the most important ritual of the Inca and involved the sacrifice of young children mostly from 4 to 10 years old. The ritual has been confirmed through later archaeological evidence in the form of children's mummies preserved in burial sites. The ritual started in the capital of Cusco for various religious reasons associated mostly with the Inca king and with the sun god who was the king's ancestor. The four provinces of the empire were expected to send one or two small boys or girls from each town and village. 
They and their families brought with them clothes, livestock, and valuables such as gold and silver that were to accompany the Capacocha, the sacrificed children, to their graves. These were all collected in the central plaza of Cusco and the children along with the items they carried walked around the statues of the four gods performing the ritual. An official had to slaughter a white llama and mix its blood with cornmeal which was then drunk by the king and his counselors. After that, a priest summoned everybody and said, Each of you, take your share of these offerings and sacrifices. Take it to your principal Huaca and sacrifice them there. Some of the children were sacrificed in Huacas close to the capital. Others had to cover distances of thousands of kilometers to reach their destination. And, finally, their death. There were certain criteria for the selection of the children. They had to be good looking and have no blemishes on their bodies. There is a story of a girl of amazing beauty who was selected but was then returned to her village in shame because she had a tiny mole under her breast that would anger the gods. Most importantly, however, they had to be virgins. This also explains their young age. Parents could find them a reason to be happy if their daughters were seduced at an early age. It meant that they were safe from being sacrificed. But it seems that not everyone desired such an exclusion from the process. The Capacocha was considered the most important religious ritual of the Incas and, thus, it was perceived as a great honor to be selected to participate in it even if it meant death. Parents sometimes volunteer their children because the sacrifice was associated with social prestige. There are also cases in which the children were given as part of an administrative deal, with the community offering their best for the empire to contribute to their community's well-being. One example was a girl named Tanta Karhua, who was offered as a capacocha with the promise of the construction of a new irrigation channel. The Capacocha, then, was a celebration, a feast of the whole empire. It was a way to connect with the gods, sending to them prematurely the best of the kind and thus showcasing confidence in the strength of the community and its willingness to thrive. It was accompanied by festivities that lasted for days. Apparently, many benefited from it. The emperor could test the strength of his empire and the loyalty of his subjects. The citizens of Cusco could celebrate, eat, and drink to their liking. Local communities benefited through royal honors. Family members acquired upgraded social status. Even the children were rewarded, in a sense. They were deified and honored by the local communities at yearly festivals, becoming gods among gods. But still, all this sounds absurd today when we think that up to 1,000 children were killed as part of the ritual. So one may ask, what was the children's attitude towards it? The mummies of them might hold the answer to this question. Human sacrifices on high Andean summits have been discovered since 1896, providing us with a more complete and somewhat scary picture of the Capacocha ritual. Notable finds include mummies and artifacts that were found buried together. A 1985 discovery on Aconcagua was the first detailed study of a Capacocha burial. The nearly perfectly preserved bodies give us much valuable information about the ritual, including most importantly the actual causes of death of the children involved. One thing that we can say for certain is that the children did not go willingly to their deaths. It is true that in many cases, like the three children in Yuyayako, we cannot find any trace of trauma. This may make us assume that they were not principally forced to their death, but other clues speak for the opposite. The presence of vomit on many children's clothes signifies that they suffered great stress before their deaths. And they had every reason to feel this, as the death that was awaiting them was agonizing. Tanta Karhua, the girl sacrificed for an irrigation system, was walled inside a tomb alive. Others were buried alive two meters underground and died of suffocation. Many victims carried severe head wounds, causing them to faint or die instantly. Others were strangled, as indicated by marks on their necks. Finally, both chronicles and evidence from the mummified bodies show that children had consumed alcohol, coca leaves, or other drugs right before the final sacrifice. It is, therefore, clear that for the children, the process was terrifying as they were manipulated and forced to their deaths. Other information we take from these preserved bodies is related to the state of health, the diet, and even the birthplace of those children. 
According to some chroniclers, the children came from families of high society, which may explain the good health conditions signified by their bodies. They were given a rich meal to eat right before being sacrificed, as they had to leave this world and go live with the gods full and happy. There are indications that this change in the children's diet to a richer one in meat and maize happened not just the day, but the whole period before their sacrifice, which could last even more than one year. Finally, using hair samples, researchers have been able to identify the ethnicity of the children, showing a wide variety of regions, many of them from the borders of the empire or even from non-Andean environments far away from the capital. So why go through this trouble? As the Inca society and its governing traditions have been largely destroyed, it is hard to recollect all the vital information needed to understand the exact reasons behind such practices, especially when they are so far removed from contemporary society's experiences. But we can construct a pretty good set of arguments based on available historical information. The first thing to consider is that the ritual of Capacocha was started by King Pachacuti in the period in which he founded the empire. We can therefore assume that imperial ambitions were part of this religious sacrifice. The importance of the Capacocha became also clear from the strict procedure which was followed during it. Cristobal de Molina, a Spanish chronicler, noted that the Incas had absolutely accurate accounting and calculations about this celebration and that, although the number of the sacrificed and the places where they were sent were innumerable and all around the empire, there was never an error and they never mistook one place with another. It is important here to mention that not all huacas got children as sacrifices. Some less important religious places only received objects. But there was a concrete list of the religious places in hierarchical order and every person or object was sent to their specific place to perform the capacocha. The travelers during this pilgrimage were sacred and when they went through a town and village, the inhabitants had to remain at home. All this energy and time for planning indicates that the Capacocha was a very serious affair and this is indeed confirmed by the Chronicles. It took place only on certain important occasions, such as when the Emperor took the throne, when an heir was born, when the Inca Emperor suffered a severe illness or died, or when major warfare occurred. It was also connected to significant events occurring in the province or otherwise affecting the empire such as earthquakes, climate crises such as droughts and severe storms, volcanic eruptions, and epidemics. But they were also associated with clinical events such as the annual maize collection or the annual festivities for a certain local god or goddess. In this sense, it was no different in its goals from other similar rituals in different civilizations. The ritual was performed to gain the god's approval or seek their help and support. There was also another reason for the Capacocha related to preserving the unity of the empire. Firstly, it demonstrated that the Incas respected ancient traditions and were worthy successors of previous rulers. It ensured that populations from different regions were mixed and communicated with one another, with one community or state ending up worshipping people from a region far away. It affirmed the centrality of Cusco where everyone had to first come and participate in the festivities and simultaneously establish the empire's boundaries by assigning importance to places in border regions. Finally, through the hierarchical order of the different huacas, the ceremony might have served as a way to reward or punish a specific community or part of the empire. For whatever reason or combination of reasons Capacocha was performed, it must be understood as the most important ritual of the Inca religion. Other human sacrifices were also performed. The runa sacrifices were rituals during which low-status able-bodied men between 25 and 50 were killed for very similar purposes and through a very similar process as the Capacocha. The warrior sacrifices were occasions in which prisoners of war or rebellious warriors were sacrificed through processes that lacked the ceremonial magnificence of the Capacocha. The Necropampa was another ritual killing that involved the sacrifice of wives, children, and servants of a deceased lord or king, and their subsequent burial with him. Finally, substitute sacrifice was a less common ritual in which a person was offered to a deity to pacify it so that it would not take the life of another one. None of these four, however, were so widely performed and are so well documented as the Capacocha. These practices lasted for nearly a century, 
From 1438 until the Spanish conquest led by Francisco Pizarro in 1533. From then on, the Incas and the Andean people endured other forms of oppression unfamiliar to their traditions. With their empire significantly disrupted and no recognizable written language to transmit information to the present, the Inca civilization remains one of history's greatest mysteries, full of bizarre practices such as these ritual child sacrifices. Mixed with remarkable architectural achievements and a sophisticated administrative system that some contemporary governments can only dream of. Because of this, and despite the known brutal practices inherent in their culture, the enduring legacy of the Incas continues to fascinate and inspire, offering glimpses into a complex and sophisticated culture.